I'm with Anthony Reggiano Jr. And maybe you'll figure out who I am by the, by the rest of this interview. <laughs> well, no. We have to start this over because that was, that was a pretty crappy interview. So. All right, come on. I am with the man, the legend, Anthony Reggiano <laughs> Jr. And me, well, we don't need to say who I am. So thanks for thanks for coming on right now. We're gonna go right into it. Why are you such a greedy? Uh, no, no. <laughs> I was listening to. Well, I'm kind of addicted to his podcast. Your podcast, Reform Gangsters. Yes, Reform Gangsters. Yep. You can go to reformgangsters.com. I actually was gonna do stand up for one of his events a month or two ago, and I didn't even prepare for my own stand up because I was listening to his interview with Rita Gigante for the second time yes. instead of preparing. So from <laughs> these interviews, one of the things he said was. If I made five thousand, I spend seven thousand. Why were you so greedy? It wasn't. I don't think it was really greed. It was like the money was coming in so fast back then. Mm -hmm. So the faster it came in, the faster you spent it. Because when you're in the street, well, for me anyway, right. when you're in the street and you're making money like that, like I'm, I, I'm making ten, fifteen thousand dollars a week, and it, you think it's never going to end. Really? So I'm spending. I'm getting five. I'm spending seven. I'm getting ten. I'm spending twelve. You think it's never going to end, so it just keeps going and going and going. And, you know, you're empty inside, so, you know, it's like just filling up some kind of void. You really felt like this would continue on for a lot longer than it did? Yeah, when, when I was... An in, optimist. When I was in the mix, like when I was in the middle of it, yeah, you right. think it's never going to end. Because it was like that my whole life until it ended, <laughs> basically. Your whole life. Well, my whole adult life since I was a kid. My father always... My father always was a big spender also, so, mm. so he sort of like passed that on to me. And uh, yeah, and when you're in that life and you're, and you're moving around that fast and you're making that kind of money, you think it's never gonna end. I had a psychic tell me that when I'm 40, two years from now, I'll be super rich and worldly famous, according to many, but I would still okay. be penurious and I would still save money, which is the one thing that, well, of many, that makes me think maybe it's true because I, I don't see myself having two cars. Because what are you going to do? I have one leg and one and one the other. I feel like I'm always going to be hoarding money as if I was going to lose it. Yeah. All right, anyway. Uh, all right. What scares you now versus what scared you then? What's the difference between your fears? What triggers your fears? Well, back then, I, I wasn't really scared of anything. I mean, I was mindful of things like like I never was really scared and now what scares me today old age yeah, <laughs> yeah. getting older um, getting I don't know, sick I, what or... scares me today is um I wasted a lot of years of my life mm. with, you know with drug addiction and prison and and it scares me that um that I can't make up for that time. Mm. You know, that's what scares me. Like, mm. I wasted a lot of time and, and, it, and it shortened my life. That's what scares me. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, 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 no, I feel like I've had at least a decade take it off my life from back problems that I had yeah. and health issues. And now at 38, you know, I keep getting cast as a 24 to 28 year old. I'm just like, Whoa, I'm trying to string out. You. Yeah, I'm trying to string out my youth because I feel Why like I not? lost all this time. So uh, yeah. what what things do you feel like, are you rushing to make up for any time in certain areas? Or certain things you're yeah, like, okay, I, I got to get it done I now. Think, I think, uh, see, there's, 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 there's a, a saying in recovery called um, that the wreckage of my past. So, you know, like what... So now it's like, yeah, I'm concerned about my health. So I, I you know, I, I try to stay as healthy as I can. Because nice. that's a concern of mine that I abuse my body all those years with the drugs and with the prison and everything. So, you know, um, now now I like to try to eat healthy. And, and when I slack off, it concerns me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like when I, like I neglect going to the gym or when I neglect eating healthy, that stuff like that concerns me now. My health concerns me because of all the abuse I put myself through. You see, if you were a cat like me, Whoa. you'd have multiple lives, and it wouldn't matter. You could trash your life over and over. So maybe you are living like you thought you were a cat for a lot of your younger could years. Could very well be. And then you, you slash are not a cat. Well, you know, I do. I did have more than one life. Yeah. Right. So well, a at cat least has two, right? What? At least two. That two, you've talked three, about. maybe three. You know, I overcame a lot. So I guess that's you could say by overcoming sections of my life is a new life starting. Right? When you overcome mm -hmm. something and you start something new. Yeah, I got new phases. Like, I had one friend say that every two months, I feel like you have this big epiphany. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was in college at least. But, um, all right, so for me, 
you know, uh, I tried to say, change my name to Steven Seagal on Facebook multiple times. I'm, I'm someone that I like to see people get what they deserve, um, for better or worse. Now, I don't seek revenge because I do believe in karma. Uh, the few times I have done bad things consciously, mm. really bad things happen to me. Both times I gained weight, lost opportunities, and tires just popped on my car, and it felt like God was pissing on me. So I, I don't really like to cross the line, but... Sometimes I see people and I'm like, ah, they just shouldn't be here. They should just be wiped off the earth. And perhaps you've had this feeling as well. So now my question to you is, you know, back in the day, you could act on some of these urges if you got the sanctions are okayed from the bosses. There's a lot of bosses. As a cat, as a cat, I don't really have any bosses. I could just go and whoever I want. But perhaps there were some people you wanted to take down but you couldn't so how would you handle those emotions or feelings if you couldn't get the okay <laughs> take a lot of deep breaths well, <laughs> you see well let's talk about well back in the day all the violence was mob related mm -hmm. so you know if we did hurt somebody they they knew the rules they knew the score they broke the rules they got hurt today it's like i had an incident a couple of years ago this guy took me in the kitchen of a, of a place and he said something to me and uh, and I felt that feeling and I just looked at him like he didn't know me he, he doesn't even know my name he thought my name was something else than Anthony and I just looked at him and I told him just do yourself a favor and just walk away from me right now right because I'm gonna hurt you right and you know and I guess the way I said it he like realized it and he and he walked away right but what I do now is yeah I just I I, I, uh, I just get violent in my mind right me too and I just tell them <laughs> you're just lucky you know you don't know how lucky you are and it's funny that you said it, this is what's happening now but so now that I have these videos out in my podcast, so a mm -hmm. lot of people where I live now know who I really am. Right. And they didn't know who I really was before this. So I work in treatment and I deal with kids. And right. a lot of kids break my balls, were breaking my balls, like cursing at me, like right. calling me names, you oh, know. Oh, right, Because right. they're, you know, they're, 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 they're detoxing and, and I would mm. just look at them and go, you should, you know, like, I'm getting messages now on Facebook and my Instagram from old clients of mine. Oh my God, I didn't, I didn't know. If I only knew, I would have never called you ah, those names. That's you know? funny. Yeah, yeah. That's really I'm, funny. I'm getting those messages all the time. That's so funny. you know, um, but yeah. So uh, I just let it go now. You let know? it go. I just yeah. let it go because I don't want to be that person anymore. Well, you asked about my boyfriend. That's yeah. one. That's one thing I said to him recently. I said, if you want to stay alive, we never live together. Because if right. you're another wing of the house, <laughs> yeah. I'll still know where to find your seat. And right. as you've seen, as you've seen with me, if you're watching, yeah. I, sometimes I need 24 hours to a week to cool down. Uh -oh. <laughs> so yeah, there's my answer. Just yeah. take, like, a, take yeah. a step away, right. right? All right. So things that you couldn't do then, because you, you know, you had the spotlight on you, and now you have the spotlight on you in different ways. What are some things you couldn't do then, and what are some things you can't do now? All right. What I couldn't do then was talk about my life to strangers. Okay. I couldn't, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't go out and tell people, you know, anything about my family, mm. about my father, about me. You know, when I first started, when I first got clean and I started going to meetings, you know, 12-step meetings, my father would tell me in the visiting room, don't be telling these people anything about right. us. Right, I would say the same thing. Right, yeah, yeah. So, so you know, I, I couldn't really be as open as I am now. And, uh, and, and now what is, what, what is there... What can't, can't I talk about now? Right. There's really nothing I can't talk about. I, I'll talk well, about anything. Well, has a few topics because there are certain things you can get killed for or wiped off YouTube or the internet. Well, I'm not going to talk politics. Okay. My politics. That's, I, I, that's fine. I, I, this, is what my, uh, this is my own belief. I don't believe, first of all, I'm not here to talk politics. I'm here to talk about my life. When I go to a concert, I want to hear music. I don't want right. to hear the person's political views. Right, if right. If they're right or left, it doesn't matter to me. I don't mm -hmm. want to know. And I, and I, I just I, want you to know if it's right, it's right. And if it's left, it's left. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But I won't talk about politics. People try to get me to talk about politics. And I won't talk bad about anybody. Like people, because there's a, in this genre now, 
there's a lot of bickering going on with other people and I'm mm. not gonna you know and people try to get me sucked into it and I'm nah. not going there nah. so I won't do that you know I won't talk about stuff I won't talk about anybody you know anybody in a negative way even if you know they deserve it I'm not gonna do it yeah they'll get their own karma yeah, I think exactly. it'll, it'll come to yeah, them exactly. I've seen it come to many people so a few more questions Good. out of celebrities and known people if you had to make a team of crime stoppers what three people would you pick crime to stop crime now to stop with crime you? now actors like you're like a neighborhood watch or maybe you're like uh, the police well, maybe uh, you're well, real well, big I don't know definitely anyone famous definitely Robert De Niro okay <laughs> an actor definitely Robert De Niro um who else um Two Leo more. Rossi. Okay. <laughs> my friend, my new not, friend. Not because he's here. Not. <laughs> <laughs> my new friend, Leo. And um, I don't know who else. You. Oh, me? Yeah. Okay, I'm pretty, I'm pretty freaking yeah. organized. Yeah. I'm pretty, so actually, speaking of organized, there's two more questions. Go ahead. Uh, so there's supposedly over 500 guys working in this operation, and it was said, I think by you or Tommy Flash, I, that if this was a business, it, it would be in a Fortune 500 company. It was, it, I mean, what, what things does running the mob uh, coincide with with running a company like Mercedes? <laughs> Well, I mean, it's be organized, a, crime guess, family, right? a crime family is very structured, it's very organized, it's all about making money, just like any corporation. Corporations mm. are about making money. It's about, you know, it's about, you know, supply and demand. Mm -hmm. right? We supply a service. Listen, the public keeps the mob in business, Okay. just like it keeps a company in business, right? A Fortune 500 company, the public keeps the, you have something to sell them, they buy it. The mob is the same thing. People, the, the, we, we service the public, we kick the money up, it's a structure, you know, uh, from associates to soldiers to captains to bosses, the money goes up the chain. Um, and it's structured in the same way as a corporation. So yeah, what? and they make more money. I mean, you know, the only thing is we can't show for our money. I mean, I know, mm. listen, I met people when I was a kid on Mulberry Street, I would walk into a club and there'd be like a little old man playing cards at a table. He had he was worth millions and millions of dollars. Right. You know, um, look at, you know, like, and I look at like this guy like Zuckerberg, they don't even know how to dress. Or maybe they strategically don't know how to dress. You What's know. that? Well, well, at least yeah. it's my last comment question. Yeah. One of the smartest things you can do is to play dumb. And I kind of live yeah. by act broke, play dumb. Yeah. Um, that's backfired on me before because yeah. some people See, this year father, thought I was too dumb and no, they tried to pull broke. something over on oh, me. So. Not my but, father uh, yeah. always told me, don't ever let anybody know you're broke. If okay. you are broke. Okay. And my father always lived like he was rich, even when he wasn't. Interesting. And a matter of fact, it's, he lived that way so good, he was so good at it, that after he passed away, people didn't believe that he died broke. Wow. So what about the play dumb part? That's my final, final question. Uh, playing dumb? Do you, do you think there's points where you should play dumb? Yeah, definitely. Especially, the, like, I had situations, in, I, I, I was underestimated a lot of times in my life. Mm -hmm. People like, because I was quiet, a little quiet. And yeah, people uh, definitely underestimated me. And it wasn't because, I, I don't think I was playing dumb. I was, yeah, I guess I was playing dumb. But I was playing like just lay back and, you know, right. like, you know, even when it came to fighting, like sometimes like I, like I would work in the after hour clubs and a couple of times I had to like hit somebody and I would knock them out with one punch and people go, they, they didn't think that was in me to do that. Like, oh my God, I can't believe you, that was in you, you know? So I don't know if that's playing dumb or just being underestimated or, I know. mean, yeah, there's pros and cons to being underestimated. Exactly. I'll play I've, had dumb. Both, I've yeah. had both work for me. I'll tell right. you this. I got some very inter interesting information from Homeland Security cops when I lived right in front of or behind the way you look at Homeland Security because they thought I was pretty dumb. <laughs> and maybe we'll talk about that in a different conversation. But yes. I was doing some activity that would be considered illegal right next to Homeland. And they told me a lot of information because, well, I look pretty <laughs> dumb. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for this oh. interview. Interesting as always and we can find you on reformgangsters.com exactly and also the, well, I'm involved in a foundation about um, Face the Music it's a foundation for people that don't have insurance to get into treatment centers they oh. can find that on my website that's great uh, and okay. we scholarship people into treatment so and people have been contacting us now through my uh, 
my uh, my podcast and my website. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll keep uh, pumping people full of drugs yeah. so we can give you some clients uh, into treatment. You. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> thank you, man. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.